I know you were saying yesterday, which you've said before, that if the Final Four didn't happen, that you were at peace with it and that you could live with that. But when the buzzer rings, when you see your dad, when you're standing on mm -hmm. the ladder and swinging it, was it everything you could hope it to be? Uh, it was great. I, th we, we've said it before, uh, the joy of competition, the fun and the pursuit of trying to win a championship. And uh, we didn't win a championship, but we got to the Final Four. And it, it, of course, it was exhilarating, it was great. Um, but I meant what I said, and it's easy to say up here, but I said it before, and I experienced things. Um, and, and I was at peace, but there was a burning desire to get these guys and our program to a Final Four and, and hopefully beyond. So um, it, it's, the moments are good, um, but I remember 19 years ago, I was sitting in the back of a press conference my father took his team to um, the Final Four. They beat Purdue. And I memorized his quote. He said a quote that I've never forgot, and it stuck with me for that long. And they asked him, is this one of the, the greatest feelings um, that you've ever had, getting to the Final Four? And, and he said this. He said, from a feeling state, euphoria, yes, it is. Uh, but it doesn't compare with faith, with kids, family, grandkids. He said, because I know what truly matters, it enables me to enjoy what seems to matter like this. I've remembered that quote, and I've tried my best to live by it. I've wanted this program to honor what's important to me, my faith in these young men through success and through failure. Um, that's what I've wanted. And, and he pointed me in the right direction. Um, as a competitor, you go after it, and you want to do it, um, but in the bigger picture, you have to be at peace with both. That's just my my viewpoint on it. So, um, sorry for the long answer, but I think I'm glad I got the chance to say that. Thank you. Center Al, right side, coach. Hey, Tony, can you kind of take us through what's going through your head when Mamadi gets that ball with one yeah. second left and kind of <laughs> all that that followed? No, it was great because Ty was clapping out, and I, I thought I was kind of like, throw it to Ty, we're going to, you know, at least get one up there. And Mamadi to catch it and just get it off that quick, so improbable. I mean, two years ago, like we said, that what happened here, we've had amazing games here and comebacks. Um, so yeah, it just was, you know, almost you're in shock a little bit. And then, all right, let's get, let's get to it. But as I said, when Carson hit that three off the glass and the way they started the game, my gosh, the threes they were hitting falling away. Um, our guys did a great job of adjusting. We ran some guys at Carson and we don't practice that a lot. I'd like to sit here and tell you, oh yeah, that's it. But we just, we had to try to do something and probably too late. But our guys, they just, they scrambled, they played, and um, that was impressive, I think, that they could do that and then not give up anything. I thought that was a key in it among, obviously, the, the individual plays. So I asked the guys, we can speak a little bit to Carson's game, and uh, yeah. when you're a team that is built on defense, is it hard not to get frustrated when a guy's making consistent yeah. shots? Yeah, we kept saying, he's got to make them all. <laughs> he's got to make them all. Keep bothering his shots. Keep moving them on offense. See if we can wear them out. Screen them, move them, run them, and... You know, and I was like, okay, it's going to happen sooner or later. And I'm like, he did not get tired, and he kept making the shots. And that's why when he made the bank shot, I said, my Lord. Um, but it was impressive. I mean, I've seen guys, you know, having played some in the NBA, you see guys that can create separation and bound up. But the range, I'll be curious to watch the film because it felt like it was about 27, 28 footers. I mean, I, you know, sometimes you can't get a feel. Was I, am I right on that? Because I – and, you know, the second, one time Kyle, ball screen's coming, he just points this way, and when he points, he rises up. So that was, again, one of the, the more, the, one of the, the best performances probably I've been uh, coached, have coached against. Kyle, what do you, th what do you think about Kihei's game overall, that pass, under those kind of circumstances? He's a freshman. He's a first year. You saw what he did last uh, Thursday. And, um, and then to see that, you know, I, I, I thought we needed to go big. Um, I thought we needed some length on Edwards, and it helped a little bit. But then all of a sudden, he was getting a little bit of space on Dre. And I'm like, all right, now we need to just wedge him and get as tight as we can on him, and then let's run someone at him. And, um, you know, he, he's, um, you know, five assists, zero turnovers, uh, the play in the glass. But we thought, I thought going big was the key for the majority of that game to – to bother, to screen them, to move them, and it helped our offense. And then at the end, we put Dre kind of back at that four spot, and and then he made a couple. That the drive, I know he was frustrated when you know as we all were when it went out of his hands, but he made the free throws, made the drive, and um, you know it just was it was a chess match. Matt is such a good coach; he's unbelievable. I've known him, um, and 
some of their stuff is some of the hardest stuff to guard. And I know that young man had a great game, but they move like we move and they set screens and in a one day prep, it's hard. Um, so our guys adjusted and did the job on the fly. Okay, two more questions, one here and one in the back row. Yeah, coach, I heard you out there on the court and, and you credited the players up over here. Sorry. Yep, sorry. Credited the players uh, and when you came in here. And, and my, I need, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely, and, and, and when Kyle said that you're one of the best coaches in the country, you kind of gave a, a head shake, but to hear them in this moment uh, talk about wanting to win for you, um, understanding sure. that it's not about you, but what does that mean to you? Yeah, and my staff. I didn't mention my staff. It, this, is, this is unbelievable for the staff and what they've done, and I'm so thankful to be in this. I don't deserve the credit. I don't care about the critics. I don't, I don't even pay attention to that. I really don't. I just know it's really hard to lose in the first round. It stung. It was, as I said, a painful gift. It was so humbling, but it, it drew me and drew our team closer in a way that we couldn't have gone. Again, the quote we use, I guess I'm full of quotes, but it's from that TED talk I showed him at the beginning of the year. And I said, and the quote is this, if you learn to use it right, the adversity, it will buy you a ticket to a place you couldn't have gone any other way. And I didn't know if that meant we'd get to a Final Four or do that. I just knew it would deepen us in ways on the court, off the court, and what we believe and mark us for the right stuff. And that, I think, is what took place. And I'm thankful that they said that. You kind of let them. They had to say that. I'm up here. But uh, there's so many great coaches. I, there's, this is, coaches get too much credit when it goes well, and they probably get too much blame when it doesn't go well. You know, And so that's the reality. Growing up a coach's son, I get all that. So um, this is not about me at all. It's about the program. It's about these young, young men, the guys who went before us, and um, you know, just trying to represent the right stuff. And now we get another chance to play another game, and hopefully advance, and get to go back to the Midwest. I'm a Midwest boy, so nothing wrong with that. OK. So I, we have two more. It was my fault on that one, OK? Uh, we'll start here in the second row and then to the back, and that'll be it. I promise. So, Tony, we've heard a lot from Kyle recently saying calm is contagious. You, you said you ripped up your card after Carson hit that three-pointer. What does it say about the team that they were able to sort of stay calm and composed and you know in a hostile environment and, and pull it out no yeah way. composure i mean when you look at what this group of guys has done on the road in the acc the last uh, couple years or last number of years that's hard you know th this tournament is unbelievable and it's it's the media and the excitement of it has made it so big but maybe the test of a a team as far as quality is over the course of the season the conference play and this is a different kind of test, and it's what's probably most, you know, honored and rewarded. But what they did to go on the road and be consistent and play, those games prepare you for that. Us being down, no one has faced pressure like these guys have or this program after losing in that first round. No one's done that in the history of the game, so no one had to do that. And then to be in that setting at Gardner, against Gardner-Webb, and that was almost another road game, to be honest for you, the way the crowd was going. And then to just kind of muster up enough resiliency and come through it. All those things, I think, prepared us for this moment to not, not lose sight and be uh, composed and stay after. And they were encouraging each other in the huddles, and they weren't going to let it get away. And if we got beat, we got beat. But we were not going to lose this one. And that was what I knew. Last question, back row. Yeah, Tony, uh, over, over here. I wanted to point out that today, to the day, was the 10th anniversary of the day you were hired at Virginia. Oh. Were you aware of that going in, and did you talk about it, not talk about it, choose to ignore it because you didn't want to jinx it or anything at all? What? I mean, I'm glad they've kept me for 10 years, so I don't know. I, don't, I, I knew I've been here 10 years just to the day, so I don't, what do you mean jinx it? What would that, how would I have jinxed it? <laughs> well, we were in the Elite Eight. That was a, I was, it was an honor to play, and yeah, I've been here 10 years. Um, Thankful that Craig Littlepage and John Oliver, the guys, took a chance on me. I'm thankful that Jim Sterk and Ann McCoy took a chance on me at Washington State, and, um, and I get the opportunity to coach. And um, so to be at a place for 10 years is a long time in today's day and age. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty good 10-year anniversary gift for sure. So, coach, thank thanks, you. congratulations, yep. and good luck in Minneapolis. Thank you.